As you can tell from the title, I'm here to talk about some of my, these aren't all of them, but some of my most anticipated releases that come out in July. And I think there's like 16 in here. I'm not gonna go in any particular order, so yeah. So I'll just tell you what dates they come out so you guys will know, but I'll be, like I said, I'm not gonna go like the sixth or whatever the, you know, the date, the first one, first set come out. I'm not gonna go in order. So let's get started. The first one I just heard about, so I'm not sure too much about it, but it's called The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wind Windig. Windig? It's this one here. Because you guys know me, I don't know how to like do the picture thing. So I just show you the picture there. This one comes out July 20th. It says, a family returns to their hometown and to the dark past that haunts them still in this masterpiece of library. I mean, literacy, literacy, how do you say that word? Horror by the New York Times bestselling author of Wanders, Wanderers, something like that. Says, the dead, the scoop, the pace, and the turns. I mean, the dread, boy, I'm totally butchering this. The dread, the scoop, the pace, and the turns. I haven't felt all this inti this so intensely since The Shining. Uh, and that is blurt by Stephen Graham Jones, who wrote The Only Good Indians. Uh, let's see. Says, long ago, Nathan lived in a house in the country with his abusive father and he and has never told his family what happened there. Long ago, Maddie was a little girl making dolls in her bedroom when she saw something she shouldn't have and is trying to remember the lost trauma by make it, make, making haunting, 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 how do you say that word, sculptures. Long ago, something sinister, something hungry, walked in the tunnels and the mountains and the coal, coal mines of, the, of their hometown in rural Pennsylvania. It says, now... Nate and Maddie Graves are married, and they have moved back to their hometown with their son, Oliver. And now what happened long ago has happened again, and it's happened to Oliver. He, may, he meets a strange boy who becomes his best friend, a boy with secrets of his own, and a taste for dark magic. There's a couple more little things that it says, but I'm not going to tell you all of it. Because that one already gave a lot, of, a lot away. Another one that comes out on the 6th, and I already pre-ordered, is A Court of Honey and Ash by Shannon Mayer and, and Kelly St. Clair. That's the cover for it. Like I said, July 6th, that one comes out. and I, Like I said, I did pre-order it, so be having that when, as soon as it comes out. It says, orphan trained to fight, raised to fear the power of Underhill. Secretly in love with a man who doesn't want me. I'm still Allie, at AKA, AKA the half human orphan fae. But my life is looking up for the first time. It only took me my whole 24 years. But when Underhill, the ancestral home of the fae, shatters, making it impossible for any fae to enter. I'm the only one who knows who did it. A secret that will be the death of me if I do nothing. A brutal madness spreads through the fae as they lose their connection to the connection to Underhill. And to save my people, my own choice, my only choice is to leave all I have fought for and go on the run. Unless I figure out how the hell magic that has existed since the dawn of time was destroyed. With a single touch. Will an entire life spent fighting to prove myself isn't going to mean anything at all. I must first, I mean, I must find the answers to this riddle of Underhill shattering haunt by the very man I loved once upon a time. It says, if you love Jennifer L. Armitrout, Sarah J. Mass, Holly Black, or Alyssa, Alyssa or Alyssa Koba, you will love this dive into the world of the fae forbidden love and story that will leave you breathless for more oh that sounds good then we got rise of the sun by lee johnson she wrote or they i'm not sure what the author um identifies that but um the author wrote um see me you should see me in the crown which i still haven't read but my daughter read it and liked it. 
but this one comes out on the six as well. I really love this cover. Isn't it cute? I don't know too much about it, but we will read it or I will read it to you. <laughs> and I know there's some like sequels that are coming out that I'm really looking forward to, but I'm not going to talk about all that right now. It says, from the author of You Should See Me in a Crown, Lee Johnson delivers a stunning novel about being brave enough to be true to yourself and learning to find joy even when times are unimaginably dark. Olivia is an expert at falling in love and at being dumped, but after the fallout from her last breakup has left her an outcast at school and home, she's determined to turn over a new leaf, a crushed free weekend at farm land music and art festival with her best friend is just what she needs to get her mind off the senior year that awaits her tony is one week away from starting college and it's the last place she wants to be unsure about who she wants to be calm and still reeling in the wake of the loss of her musician turned roadie father she's heading back to the music festival that changed his life and hopes that following in his footsteps will help her find her own way forward Says so when the two arrive at the farmland, they last the last thing they expect is to realize that they need to join forces in order to get what they're searching for out of the weekend. As they work together, they the festival becomes so much more complicated than they bargained for. Olivia and Tony will find that every I mean that they find they that they need each other and music more than ever they ever could imagine. So it sounds like it's going to be a female-female romance, which sounds good. Um, the next one is These Howl Vowels by Lexi Ryan. I think, yeah, this comes out on the 20th. This is what the cover looks like. Oh, the publisher is HHM Books for young readers. I should tell you guys that. I always forget... A lot of people will tell you in their in the description who the publisher is, but I always forget. It says from New York Times bestselling author Lexi Ryan, Cruel Prince meets yeah, Cruel Prince meets a court of throne and roses in this sexy, action packed fantasy about a girl who is caught between two treacherous fairy or fay courts and their dangerous, seductive prince. Bree hates the Fae and refuses to have anything to do with them, even if it means starving on the street. But when her sister is sold to the statistic, statistic, how do I say that word, king of the unseelie court to pay a debt, she'll do whatever it takes to get her back, including making a deal with the king himself to steal three magical relics from the seelie court. Gaining unfitted Richard, something like that, access to the Seely Court is easier said than done. Bree's only choice is to pose as a potential bride for Prince Rowan. And she soon finds herself falling for him. Unwilling to let her heart distract her, she accepts help from a band of unseely misfits with their own secret agendas. As Bree stands time I mean, spends time with their mysterious leader, Finn, she struggles to resist his seductive charms. Caught between two dangerous courts, Bree must decide who to trust with her loyalty and with her heart. That sounds good. You guys know me. I like A Court of, Missing, a court of Throne of Roses and all that. So, the next one is The Final, the final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrickson. This one comes out on the 13th of July. I love the Southern Group, the Southern Girls Guide for Slaying Vampires or whatever it's called by the, by by him. So I'm super excited for this one. Don't remember exactly what this one's about. It says, the horror master puts his unique spin on slasher movie tropes. USA Today. In horror movies, the final, oh yeah, okay. So it's about final girls, the last ones that are, the last girl that's left in the movie. And... Everybody else dies or whatever. And um, there's like a group of them that, and they have a support, like it says. And I think they think like it's starting over again or there's, yeah, it's starting over again, I guess. And I think they're like picking off the people from um, that are final girls and killing them. 
That's what it sounds like. I don't want to like be here all day, but I know um, Heather from Bookables, she read this and she said it was pretty good. I think she gave it four stars, if I'm not mistaken. So I was super excited. Cause like I said, I love the vampire one. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. The next one is another one that's supposed to be creepy. It's The Taken of Jake Levinston by Ryan Douglas. I think this comes out on the 13th. Yeah, the 13th as well. Look at this cover. Like this one, it looks so scary. And I know Beautiful Bookish Bethany, I think this was the one she DNF'd because I know there's possession in this storyline and she does not like books with possessions. I think that's what she said when it, like there's possession involved. But it sounds cool to me, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I doubt if I would read this one right away, but I am super excited about it. And it's short, it's only 256 pages, but it's about Jake who, um, he could talk to ghost or see ghost, I don't know. Yeah, and, um, and he has a crush on this guy named Alexter. Alistair, Alistair, Alistair. Alistair. But he's a medium, like I, I didn't mention that, but he's a medium and um because of the for the ghost and there's like this ghost that um that killed people at the school like a boy that killed people at his school or something like that and he takes i mean tries to possess them like take over him and stuff it said that that this guy sawyer um what? was a troubled teen who shot and killed six kids at the local school before taking his own life it says, now he's powerful, he's a vengeful ghost, and he has plans for Jake. Suddenly, everything Jake knows about dead, about dead world, world, world goes out the window as Sawyer begins to haunt him. High school soon becomes a different kind of survival game. One Jake is not sure he can win. This one sounds like it would be good for, like, I'm going camping in, um, in, in August, the end of August, this would be go, good for camping or it would be good to read for a Halloween month. The next one is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. She wrote, what was the name of that one that I really loved? House of, yes, House of Salt and Sorrow. I really love that book. That was kind of creepy. I think it was the 12, is it the 12 or the 13 Dancing Princess, whatever it is, 12, 13, whatever it is. But I love that one. This one comes out on the 27th. And I love this cover. I don't know. Like, I'm really into, like, yellows and oranges lately. And that's a pretty, even though I think this is creepy, it's still a pretty, like, summery cover. You know, the book's supposed to be dark. And um, this one says, from the New York Times bestselling author of Ho House of Salt and Sorrow comes a memorizing and chilling novel that the that's the village meets needful things about what lurks in the shadows of the people you think you know. It says Ellery Dowing is waiting for something to happen. Life is in isolated Amity Falls, surrounded by an impenetrable forest, has a predictable sameness. Her days are filled with tending to her family's beehives, chasing after her sisters, and dreaming of bigger things with her twin Sam. Samuel is free to roam as he wishes. It says early town settlers settlers fought off monstrous creatures in woods and whispers that the creatures still exist. Keep the Downing and their neighbors from venturing too far. When some town folks go missing on a trip to fetch supplies, a heavy unease settle settles settles over the falls. Says strange activities begin to plague the town, and as the seasons change, it's clear that something is terribly wrong. The creatures are real, and they're offering to fulfill the residents' deepest desire, however grand, for just a small favor. These seemingly thrifting demands, however, hide sinister intentions. Soon, Ellery finds herself in a race against time to stop Amity Falls, her family, and the boy she loves from going up in flames. Hold on, you guys. Okay, everybody. The next one is uh, Half Sick of Shadows. Um, I have it. I don't know where it is. Here it is. I have the copy here because I got it early from Book of the Month. So this is what it, this is what the Book of the Month one looks like. 
And this comes out on the 6th as well, so not much longer. I'll read to you what it says on here since I have it. It says, The Lady of Shallot reclaims her, her story in this bold feminist reimagining of the Arthurian myth from the best-selling author of Ash Princess. Everyone knows a legend of author destined to be king of the beautiful Guinevere who will betray him with his mo most loyal knight, Lancelot, of the bitter sorceress Morgana, who will turn against them all. But Alina alone carries the burden of knowing what is to come, for Elaine of Shalot, of Shalot something like that, is cursed to see the future. I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but it sounds like, like um, they're trying to get it. I'm not sure if they're trying to stop it. Yeah, she's trying to change. She's got to decide how far she'll go to um, change the history. So, yeah, that's what that one's about. So, if you like Arthur, Arthur, Arthurian retellings, how we say that word, then you should like that. Again, July 6th, that comes out. This The next one is Capture the Crown by Jennifer Estep. Estep, something like that. I think this is going to be in one of the book boxes I'm getting next month. I'm pretty sure this was one of the ones they said was going to be on it, in it. So that's cool. Um, this one comes out July 6th, in case I didn't say that. This one says, A bold new heroine protects her kingdom from magic, murder, and mayhem. By moonlighting as a spy. Best-selling author Jennifer Estep returns to her crown of Schwartz world with an all-new trilogy and a bold new heroine, heroine who protects her kingdom from magic, murder, and mayhem by moonlighting as a spy, which I already read. It says, Gimme Gimma Ripley has a reputation for being a pampered princess who is more interested in pretty gowns, sparkling jewelry, and other furious, fur, fur, how do you say that, things. To learn how to rule the kingdom of Andavir, and something like that. But her carefully crafted personnel is just an act to hide the fact that Jimmy, or Gemma, Gemma, I think it is, is powerful, is a powerful mind maker, or major, and a spy. It says she's, it says she's undercover trying to figure out who is still in the large amount of tear stones from one of the Ripley royal mines. And she encounters Prince Leono, Le, 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 Leando, something like that. Leandus, something like that. Something of Morta, her mortal enemy. Gim, Gemma tries to steer clear of the handsome prince, but when she finds herself behind enemy lines, she reluctantly joins forces with Leo. Also coming to Jimmy's, Gimmy's or Gemma's aid is Grimly, her beloved gargoyle. That's all I'm going to tell you. I don't want to go too much into it. Um, the next one is Curses by Lish. Lish? Lish? It's L-I-S-H. Lish, I guess. McBride. This comes out on the 20th. Look at that cover. This one says... Curses the Beauty and the Beast. Retelling I've been waiting for. And that's blurt by Marissa Meyer. This is a unique and twisty magical romp. Tamara, Tamara Pierce, New York Times bestselling author. It says, Merith Cavern, ref, Cavern refuses to fulfill her obligation to marry a prince. Leading to a fairy god Ling's curse. She'll be forced to live as a beast forever unless she agrees to marry a man of her mother's choosing before her 18th birthday. It says Tevin, Tevin, something like that. Tevin is T E V I N. Demont has always been a pawn in his father, I mean, in his family cons. The prettiest boy is a big, in a big family. His job is to tempt na naive. Rich girls to abandon their engagements unless their parents agree to pay pay him off. 
But after his mother runs a fall, a fall of the beast, she decides to trade Tevin for her own freedom. Now Tevin, Tevin, how do you say his name, and Merith has agreed that he can pay off his mother's debt by using his con artist skills to help Merith find the best match. But what if the best match is Tevin himself? So another retelling. We're getting closer. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, no, six. A couple of these are showing again for some reason. Another one is She, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This comes out also on the 20th. There's a lot of books on the 20th. Another one that has a lot of orange, I mean, yellow and orange on the cover, which like I said, I'm very drawn to this year. I don't know. There's so many good ones with that color. This one says, Still Greatness. Epic, tragic, tragic, and glorious. It will wreck you and will be great. And you'll be grateful. Alec E. Harrell. says, A dazzling new world of fate, war, love, and betrayal. Fantasy will never be the same. Zine Chow? Is that Chow? I don't know how you say the author's name, but the author of The Sorcerer to the Crown series. An instant classic. C.S. Pacat, author of Captive Prince Trilogy. I'm just going to read you the tag here. Milan meets the Song of Achilles in Shelley Parker's Chan's She Who Became the Sun, a bold, queer, and lyrical reimagining of the rise of the founding empire of the Ming Dynasty from amazing new voice and literacy fantasy. Literary fantasy. How do you say that word? To possess the mandate of heaven, the female monk Zhu or Za will do anything. That's all I'm going to read to you. I don't want, like I said, I don't want to be here all day. The next one is the mythic Coda Rose, something like that. That comes out on the 13th. This is the cover. Sorry, this is going to be another long video, but there's a lot of good books that are coming out this year. Especially the last half of the year. It says, in the spirit of Nina LaCroix, LaCroix, La something like that, LaCroix, LaCroix, La, I don't know, Cor, and Adam Sevilla, this offbeat and romantic debut novel follows a teen girl who desire, whose desire to find out more about her late rock star father brings her closer to the last person she expected. Everything Coda Rose knows about her father she's learning from other people. Moving to New York City with her mom won't change that, even if New York was Mac Grady City, where he became famous, where he wrote his music, and also where he died. Coda has more important things on her mind, like how she's in love with her best friend, Lindsay, and doesn't have the courage to tell her. Agonizing over how to confess her feelings leads Coda to explore Mac's and ad Geminic, how you say that, history, in search of answers. She tracks down her dad's bandmate, and ex-girlfriend Sadie Pasquale, something like that, and finds herself becoming rapidly obsessed with the Mercular musician. How do you say that word? As Coda and Sadie complicated bond deepens, they are both forced to grapple with the black hole Mark left behind or get sucked in themselves. Another one with yellow on the cover. I tell you guys, and some orange. Raha, Radha, and Jaws. Recipe for Romance by Nisha or Nasha Shamer, Shamar, something like that. Look at the cover. I'm just drawn to him. And this comes out on the 13th. It says, To all the boys I loved before meets World of Dance and this delectable love story that combines food, dance, and a hint of drama to cook up the perfect romance. Raha is on the verge of becoming one of the greatest some kind of dancer. It's K A K A T H A Yeah, H A D in the world. Dancer in the world. Until a family betrayal cost her the biggest competition of her life. It says now she has to she's left her Chicago home behind to follow her stage mother to New Jersey at the Princeton Academy of Arts. Raha is determined to leave performance is determined to leave performant in her past and riveting herself from scratch. Ja, or Jaha, something like that, is captain of the Bollywood Beats dance team, ranked first in his class, and an overachiever with 
no college plans. Tight family funds means medical school is a pipe dream, which is why he wants to make the most of the high school. Of high school, when Raha enters his life, or Roha, I'm not sure how you say it. He realizes she's the exact ingredients he needs to sh for a shot, a show-stopping senior year. With careful, careful, car graphic, car graphic, how you say that word. Both Raha and Ja will need to face their fears and their families if they want a taste of happily ever after. I need some of these like romances, cause I tell you. I have some, like, really, what you call it, books. Okay, we got three more. The next one is When We Were Strangers by Alex Richards. This comes out July 27th. This one, I think, is a thriller. Um, let me see. It says, um, from the author of Accidental comes a gripping story about a teen grieving her father's sudden death and grappling with the shocking secrets he left behind. Oh, this is about Eva. Her dad um, dies and she finds out, her mom doesn't know, but she finds out that um, her um, dad was going to leave her mom for his pregnant mistress and she's really young. And she, before, for, before she, um, what you call it, like, puts all his clothes away because she found like a suitcase or whatever and hides it from her mom and then she goes away and she um she um starts to get obsessed with finding out about this lady this girl that's pregnant by her dad that was pregnant yeah that's pregnant by her dad and something happens and these two are like thrown together and it's like a obsession thriller whatever type of thing I know I'm totally butchering it, but this video is going to be long. <laughs> then we got Six Crimson Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lynn. I pre-ordered this one. This one comes out on the 6th as well. Oh, I didn't even show you guys the thing. I haven't read her other series. Duology, I know Robin, unless she got rid of it, has the first one. Because I had it and I gave it to her. But I might borrow it from her and read it because I'm curious about it now. But Spin the Dawn, this one says, a prince, a princess in exile, a shape-shifting dragon, six enchanted cranes, and an unspeakable curse. Drawn from fairy tale and East Asian, Asian folklore, this original fantasy from the author of Spin the Dawn is perfect for fans of Shadow and Bone. Yay, that's all I need to know. That's all I'm going to tell you guys, because this is a long video. We got one more. Isn't It Romantic by Lisa K. Adams. I haven't even read the second one. I only read the first book, but this is the one with the Russian. This comes out on the 20th, I forgot to tell you. But there's this Russian character in the book, and this is his story. And I don't really want to tell you anything more. I'll just read what it says here. With his passion for romance novel... It was only a matter of time before Vlad wrote his own, his wrote one. So I think like it's a second chance. I think he was married to this girl and she comes back. I'm not really positive, but I just like the first one. And even though I haven't read the second or the third, I think there's, this is the fourth one or is it the third one? This is either the third or the fourth one. Pretty sure there was four. Cause I think there was one with the cat on the cover that I haven't read. Yeah. So I think this is the fourth one, but yeah. So, yeah, that's it. This is a long video, so I'm going to let you guys go. Let me know what some of your most anticipated reads for July are. And, yeah, just I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm sorry it's so long. But, hey, there's a lot of books. In August, there's going to be a lot of books in August, too. So, these videos are going to take a while. <laughs> so, whenever I do one of these, just make sure you guys have some food and water, okay? Because it'll be a long video. But I'm going to let you guys go. Like I said, let me know down below what your what your most anticipated reads for July are. And yeah, let me know if you guys like this video by giving a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing. And if you do, please hit that bell icon. It will really show you, help you guys so you guys will know when. And it will help me because it will show when a new video is up for you guys to watch. So please do so. And thanks for staying this long. If you stayed this long, 
Um, if you know how to do the emoji, do like a, uh, like a flower, like maybe a daisy or whatever kind of flower you want to put down, but a flower. How about that? All right. If possible, maybe something yellowish since, or orange. I don't know. You know, because that's lately, those are like the two colors that are really like on my brain a lot and covers I seem to be like going for in books. So yeah, but I'm gonna let you guys go. And I hope you guys all have a great day. I don't know what day this will be up, but when you see it, I hope you enjoy it. Happy readings. I hope you guys are having a good reading month and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. Deep in the shadows